So for making rhubarb and ginger jam, you need your rhubarb, your ginger, root ginger, fresh, uh, a lemon, uh, preferably unwaxed, if they're waxed, wash them, and sugar. And we use jam sugar because it has added pectin in it, especially for rhubarb because rhubarb is a very low pectin fruit. If you have high pectin fruit, you can use regular sugar. Like that, okay? So for the prep, your prep, how you prep your rhubarb is wash it and then trim. Now if you have particularly large rhubarb like this, you can split it down. Okay. And then cut it into inch length. smaller you have your rhubarb, the better, about an inch, an inch and a half, because it's a very fibrous fruit, so you don't want to have a lot of fibre in it. Like so. So, for this particular, you need, this particular jam, you need a kilo of fruit and a kilo of sugar. So once you have a kilo of fruit, and it just measure as you go along. Kilo of fruit. So you do it that. Put it into your saucepan. So you have now got a kilo of sugar, which you have already heated in an oven for 15 minutes. You heat sugar because it will come to the boil quicker, and you also make it a much more delicious jam to have your sugar already heated. So when your jam jars are heating, you can heat your sugar along with them. So, sugar in, to put in the juice and zest of one lemon, the lemon roll it to release the juices, put your zest in first, just the top of the skin, not down into the pit because that's very bitter and you only want the taste. So. And then that's ready to go onto the gas and bring to the boil. Uh, yeah. You also can grate in the ginger. So with ginger root, you just peel it. So ginger goes really well with rhubarb. Fresh ginger tastes much better, but if you buy a lot of ginger and you're not using it all the time, you can freeze it and uh, you can grate it from frozen as well as fresh. 
can also use crystallized ginger. It's much harder to find. Then wooden spoon and onto a gas and melt down. Now, yeah. that will be done. Okay, so once you've put your uh, ginger and all your ingredients, rhubarb and everything in the pot, sugar, basically, once it's on the heat, you, the sugar will start to melt down and basically keep stirring it. Don't leave it or else the sugar will burn. So every few minutes keep stirring it until it's all uh, reduced down and liquid and as I said, once you bring it to a rapid boil, let, let it boil. This, the sugar has to come up to what they call setting point, okay, which is 105 degrees. If you don't have a jam or a sugar thermometer, Basically, how you test this is by using a cold plate. So what you're doing is you're waiting until the sugar is totally melted and come to setting point. So as you keep stirring, the sugar's melting. And then your fruit will start to become soft and break down. Once, uh, what you can see with this, the fruit is all broken down and basically all the sugar has melted and all the ingredients have combined together. So you take a cold plate and you just puddle some on it, leave it for a couple of seconds and basically what you're looking for is for the jam to wrinkle once you push it. So you can see that happening there, it's very set and you can see it just slightly wrinkling which means the sugar has reached setting point and you can pot up your jam then. Okay, so uh, your jam jars, uh, you can use recycled jars as long as they're glass. You wash them in hot soapy water to take off any of the labels and the glue that's on the glass jars. Once you have them washed and dried, you put them in the oven for 15 minutes at 180 degrees and this is to sterilize them. Also to uh, warm up the jars because putting hot sugar into cold glass jars will cause them to crack. So when they're ready, you just take them out of the oven, place them on a cloth so that you're not damaging your countertop, like so. Okay. Now, and we take our prepared jam, like so, and we use a funnel and a ladle. So, basically stir up your jam. Now, you can use a jam funnel, which is much, much wider and made of metal, but they're very, very hard to get these days. So I just use a regular plastic funnel, you just have to be very careful because uh, the sugar in the jam is extremely hot. So I start ladling in, like so. And you ladle in the jam to a centimetre from the top. cloth and as I say, it picks up the drips of jam so it's easier to clean up afterwards because it can get extremely sticky. So once you have your jam pots filled Basically, you have to seal them. So what you do is use jam covers, which you can buy in most shops. So this contains silicone discs or little wax discs. So 
So you have a side that's matte finished and a side that's waxed. So it's the side that's waxed that you put down onto your jam. And this is to help seal. So you just pop it down onto the seal is created, like so. And then these little cellophane discs you take and you wet one side just with your hand like so. And the dry side of the paper you put down on the jar. So wet side up. You also have a small rubber band which then goes around the top. So this is when this dries it will create a seal on the jar as this dries so it does. So then you have a perfectly sealed jam of jar. It would be good for up to six months and storage is in a cool, dry, airy place. You don't need to store it in a fridge because uh, the amount of sugar that's in it and the fact that it's been sealed and this will cause a vacuum will keep it very good for a long time. So your next stage then, just before you finish, is to label as to what your jam is. So this is rhubarb and ginger. And you also, very important, is to date it. So you remember when you've made it. And when it has to be used by. So this then goes on the front of your jar. And you have your rhubarb and ginger jam.